Hey people, it's me again. So, anyways, um, it was one of the things that a lot of people had talked about when it comes to like their manifestation journeys of that sort, and and as far as like um, living in the state of the wish fulfilled or whatever you call it in that sense, it's about that feeling that you get when you finally accomplish something when you set out to do and that's what it is you know and and it's like that feeling you know like you ran a marathon and you know and and then you got to the finish line and and all you want to do is rest you know or you finally had climbed up the tallest mountain as far as that goes and that sort of thing. And it is like that when you finally get your specific person and all and you know, when it's like the state of that wish fulfilled and when you finally got them, you finally got the date, you finally got to do them or whatever it is. <laughs> or and now you kind of want to rest a little bit, or at least just to have that victory lap and of that sort. Yeah. And it was just one of those little things there when I was kind of doing the visualizations and all that. It was like I was trying to remember, like, what is that exact feeling, you know, that you feeling of that exhilaration and all, you know. As far as that goes. And. In a way. It's kind of like that whole meaning of that song. Into the unknown. Where it's like. One part. Uh, good. Uh, excitement. And one part bad excitement. As far as that goes. But then. It's like the good excitement kind of wins over in the end, you know, that exhilaration, you know. And I keep forgetting, you know, where I where I live. You know, I live in Orange County. And there are certain people that, you know, that, that dream of going to Disneyland, you know, going to the beach as far as that goes. And here I... I had stumbled upon this one guy who uh, lives in some place in Wisconsin, and he took the Amtrak to get to where I where I live here, and and it's one of those little things, you know, that you know after like this sort of it wears off, and then it's like it, it has become incorporated to your life of that sort and that was kind of like what they meant by you know this this other state of manifestation like the savage state or whatever it is and where you're kind of like where, where that whole new car smell is is gone and and now it's like you know we have to maintain that sort of thing you know and that's or other people kind of struggle when it comes to relationships of that sort. And and it was like one of the biggest problems there when it came to that for me. Where I, I finally got in the guy and then and then and then it's just like then now what? You know, that was the the problem, you know, was like when I finally gotten that out of the way when it came to Ricky, when Matt had finally left me alone you know, and I finally moved on, and all this sort of shit, you know, and then here I finally get to be with Ricky and all that, and, and I did not want to, did not know what to do with him at that point, because I was so concentrated on actually trying to get him, and of that sort, and that was, like, the biggest problem, the biggest problem with certain people, you know, when you try to pursue somebody, and then, and then, like, once you finally get close enough to 
to know exactly what they are, and then you're like, you kind of don't really want them that much anymore because you're more interested in the pursuit rather than the actual relationship of that sort. And and I think that was one of my biggest problems. And when I should have realized that there was just more that there's that pursuit of that guy, you know. And in a way, that was kind of the bigger thing when it came to like that guy Matt that I complained about that. I think he was just more interested in the pursuit of me, but not actually being me. He didn't really want to get to know me. He just wanted to fuck me. That's all he really was interested in. You know, but he wasn't being honest enough to say that's what he was interested in. You know. And then what came to um what came to Ricky there was at least he was honest enough as far as that goes to to say that and i was honest enough to say that sort of thing that that i was more or less interested in just you know something casual with all these different guys and, and and i had plenty of time to like figure out if i want anything serious with any of them you know because for that matter and the the bigger thing was I think I was ready for a serious relationship at some point, but then, you know, my whole story with Matt made me think otherwise because because he acted very clingy on me, and then for what? Because he just wanted to hook up with me, you know, when he could have just been more honest about it instead of just you know doing this guise of of. Um, being in love with me of that sort, and, you know, when he, he could have just simply said that right then and there, you know, but, but, you know, and part of it is, like, for me, you know, when I came back here to California, when I was living in Irving, Texas for two years, and, and, and I was back home out the first time, I was like a kid in a candy store. You know, and and I just I just want Dad to just to cut me loose and and let me run around and and like get all the candy that, that I can get my grubby little hands on and eat it on until my teeth rot out. You know, that sort. And Dad was like, "No, Scott, you have to pick one piece of candy. I'm not gonna buy you more, all these different buckets of candy." And I'm like. I'm like, but dad, I want some candy. You know, that's how it felt like. You know. You know what I mean? And it was like, that that part, you know, where and I started to do that, throw a temper tantrum and, and do that, that cross arm with that glare. And they're like, you know, Scott. If you don't behave, I'm going to take you out of the store. You know, that sort of thing. You know, whatever it was like, if dad had said that or if mom said that, you know. You know, like, how they dealt with, like, the five or six old me, you know, that I just want the candy. And, you know, and, and uh... And at one point, it was like, <clears throat> like that. But most of the time, it was like, like, uh, they would, like, my parents would give me candy like that if I asked permission, if I was being good. Yeah. And that's kind of like what they said about manifesting in that sense. You know, I said before, it's all about, all about how you feel like you deserve it or not and a lot of times you know there are people that go for that sort of thing where you feel like you don't deserve it you know when it's not really about that it's really about how you feel that you deserve it and i deserve you know the the best guy out there for me you know and 
and I just want to see who is, you know, close enough to, to that at that point, you know, you know, regardless who it is, and I feel like I'm getting, like, one step closer and closer to getting J2, you know, as far as that goes, because it's, it's not that I'm doing this for him, I'm doing this for me, because, you know, I deserve a guy like him. That's all. And the truth of the whole matter is just, I just, I just want to love him. And that's all, and, and it's not, it's not anything really hard for him to figure out. You know, sure, he lost his husband, and sure, he lost the, lost the, the roomie, the slash lover of that sort, but it doesn't mean he can't have anybody else, you know, and especially me, you know, but, you know, it just, it just felt like, um, in that sense, like about before the whole falling out, it was like, like, it was gonna play out in like one of those type of movies, like, like that, you know, where there's that whole falling out, and then there's like this montage of the time has passed, and all, and then, and then, and then after a while, it's like, you know, where he comes back and apologizes, and it's like, like the last, you know, minute and a half of a, of a movie, like, you know, like, forgetting Sarah Marshall, or one of those sort of things, like, we're at the very end, where, where we meet up, and, and it's strongly implied that he and I are together, you know, eventually, because it's sort of a way for, like, the audience to put a little nice little bow on the top of, top, you know, but, you know, despite having all these sort of difficulties, but, you know, he and I could work it out. It's just all about the. I forget what they called it. You know, one is just communication and trust, and then the other one was patience or something like that. And I think that was what they they uh, harbor on. I mean, rag on about <laughs> about successful relationships and blah blah blah. You know. And it's not really about rocket science or anything of that sort, you know. So, anyways, I guess that's probably it. So, talk to you guys later.